Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So I have been making um, handmade stamps. So it's soft cut lino and I've been carving into them with a little carving toolkit. I'd made some alphabet letters and I'd written Evie, Thomas and Trish because they're friends from the makers of mixed media art art group on Facebook, which is run by PM Artist Studio. So I've been designing little designs and I'll show you the process I've used. And I'm just showing you here. I drew the design on the paper. So what I'm using is paper that is generally, you know, scrap paper that I have underneath when I'm painting and stuff. And you get left with little marks on these papers. So I kind of use them as starting points, sort of pull out a few points really and then I'd decide how I would like to join them up and if I would like to join them up and where to etc. So here I'm just doing a small one because um, it's just to show you. So I'm just drawing this with a pencil. There's actually holes in the paper. That's what I drew around for those three um, circles in a row. <laughs> and so this is the design. I'm sure this is it. And then what I'm going to do is I put it on the gel plate. So I've got a little record of it. Um, I didn't... I should have went over it again with the pencil, but I didn't. And it was quite a faint mark that was left on the gel plate. So I'm just removing it with a little bit of baby oil. And then what I'm going to do is go over the paper again. I either used charcoal or I just went over with the pencil again, heavier. And you can see the difference in the mark. It's, it's more obvious um also just putting a thin layer of paint over the top to pick it up and then I think it was 20 seconds is all I left it on for. Charcoal and graphite comes off very easily. See? Quite proud of how quick that was. <laughs> So we have that and next what I'm going to do is I'm just going over it with charcoal and then you don't want to go over and over it because there's a kind of lightness to the, the shape, there's a flow to it that you don't want to lose by being overly, if you keep trying to define it further you're going to lose that, 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 that nice kind of flow to it. So, and then I'm turning it around just to put a charcoal mark on this soft cut lino. Now, this stuff was expensive. Um, it cost me £14 for three A4 sheets. So, I've put it right in the corner. You can get cheaper versions. I do need to investigate further about it. So, that's me just going over it with a china pencil because that's um, permanent. And this is me carving into it. So this little hand carving set costs seven or eight pound, I think. It comes with like five blades. I'm just sticking to the one just now. Um, you know, I'm I'm not even cutting it like a proper lino cut. I'm really cutting it in a way to um, use on the gel plate. That's that's the purpose of this. And I was just showing you there. I've got a plaster on my finger <laughs> because those blades are very sharp. So, um, by the hand guard, the set with the hand guard, it's one or two pound more, but it's worth it. And I actually find the hard hand guard is quite helpful too. Um, it helps you hold the paper down a bit more, not the paper, the lino down a bit more as well. Now, cutting circles is a bit wonky and you just take your time, have a bit of patience and you will make mistakes, but what I do when I make a mistake is I just add it in as part of the design. I just adapt. So that's me made the initial design. And now I'm going round the outside. 
And this bit that I'm carving out just now, well, it, this is like the exterior of the design. And what, that's the bit I'll cut out with the scissors. So I'm no expert in this in any shape or form. And obviously they're quite sharp blades. So um, I would definitely look for a more specialist resource to find health and safety information for this. So when I'm cutting around the exterior as well, we're, we'll have some negative space in there and we carve those little bits out. So that when it's on the gel plate, we have a kind of... You'll see it. It's like... Um, anything that's down, you know, has been carved away leaves a mark and anything that's sticking up leaves a mark because the part that contacts the gel plate which is the bits we've not carved will um will remove some of the paint and the bits that are carved away you will have a darker line of paint left you'll see so that's it there so just carved away some negative space and this is me putting it down you really don't need to leave it down long. Certainly not as long as this. <laughs> it really does act like a stamp. I find the thinner layers of paint work better with it as well. I'm just showing you the negative space where I'd carved out. So I'm going to look at making um making like patterns. So a couple of gel prints later I'll show you and I'm kind of trying to create patterns with them as well. Right now I'm just filling up the gel plate. That's like a little meerkat. <laughs> I made a cat earlier on and I gave the cat a tail. But then I thought, oh, I'll need to make a tail for the cat. So the cat ended up with two tails. But actually, I really like um, the way that I'd cut into that. And I've got new brayers. I thought my gel plates were um, deteriorating. They weren't. It's the brayers. It's made a world of difference replacing them. I mean, I don't know how long I've been gel plating for, two or three years now, and I've never replaced the brayers, so. It was a good investment. So there we go. You can see it's really interesting, and I think as well, see, using these as maybe focal points and amongst other stencils or other mark making, they're just a nice add-on. And I'm also trying to kind of keep a little record of, like, so that design we made on the paper, I'm kind of, I've got the gel print of it. I've done, I'll, I've done a few other designs and I've got, like, oil pastel um, versions of them, soft pastel versions. So I'm wanting to kind of think of, take one design and think of different ways that I can look at that design. Because I think it will improve my skills overall. Now, remember I said the lino cut was expensive? I used every bit of it. Um, so they're the bits that I've, you know, I've cut out and, um, and I've used them. Because they make nice framework. And I like the flexibility of it. There's a sturdiness to it, but at the same time, it's flexible enough for you to just... You'll see me doing it in a wee... Once we take the big ones off, um, there's flexibility to it where you can just press a certain part of the stamp onto the gel plate. So I do a few more pulls, but I, I literally just show you the end result. <laughs> So you can see as well the stencils on the left hand side, how you can carve out quite a lot of space 
or you can keep quite a lot um, and you'll get different effects with it. I think here you can see we've got big chunky circles but then we've got that kind of dog creature on the left hand side in the middle. That's got quite a lot of fine detail in it. So you, they're quite versatile in what you can make with them. And see here when I was talking about you could just use it like a stamp. I'm literally pressing it down and taking it back off. I am overfilling the gel plate just now, but it's just a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm just enjoying. It's like waiting for the waiting when I have when I put the paper down and I have to wait for it to um be dry enough to pull off. I'm like, oh I've got nothing to stick these these stamps onto. <laughs> so that's the gel plate. Oh, and this is Opera Rose. I picked up the old brayer by mistake and you could see the difference. It's just not moving the paint the same at all. And then I bring out the exact same brayer. Brand new. Oh, and look at it. It's a joy. So this is Opera Rose by Windsor & Newton. And it's just beautiful. This wasn't my favourite design that I made but it was my favourite colours. It's the blue, the pink and then the purple that comes with it as well. It's just gorgeous. Obviously I let them dry before I'm pulling the paper up. I'm sure you know that. There's a magical quality to that one. See because we've got that kind of Aladdin's rug shape so this is another one. This is um, those blues again, but with cadmium lemon yellow. And this is cadmium lemon yellow on lamp black. I'm waiting on black paint coming. This was nice, this one. So I've made a repeating pattern there. And this is the last one. And this is Van Dyke Brown with Cadmium Yellow Deep Hue. And so that is it. And um, thanks very much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed. And I hope to see you soon. And take care. Bye.